Tell me I've been in that living room all white I'm up all night, season ends while niggas sleeping Lost too many guys, guess why I'm breathing We keep it strong, as the name live on Like if they was never gone, mind blown And even my never seen Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to The Great Culture. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So we got a good old boy, Joel Osteen, a big multi-million dollar mega church owning pastor, uh, usually centered down in Houston. I don't know if he has any other churches anywhere else, but, you know, he's widely known, widely televised. And has a large, large, large following. Um, he's catching flack right now because on social media, uh, allegedly, and there's been more information that, you know, kind of disputes, disputes this, but he's catching a lot of backlash because a picture, uh, he posted a picture of his, $325,000 Ferrari. Uh, everybody's mad. You know, it's bringing back the conversation again of, you know, pastors just being pimps, being crooks, um, you know, and everything else. You know, just it all being a get rich scheme. Now, I, now nine times out of ten, I think that does characterize, you know, your pastors outside of the crook area, outside of the crook classification. Um, but there's, you know, it's come out now that, you know, it actually wasn't his picture or anything like that. He didn't post that. And no, he doesn't own a $325,000 Ferrari or whatever, but. Let's talk about it as if he did, because like I said, all the all of the backlash, everything that came with it, you know, people had a lot to say and a lot of people are pissed off. You know, they believe in that, you know, he should fall. You know, this is the reasons why you should be taxed by the U.S. government and everything like that. Um, These are my thoughts on it. He can't be, he can't be a crook. Now, if you want to say manipulative, which is like I say, a lot of pastors can be, but you know that's, you know that's a subjective. That's subjective. Um, but he's not a crook because he's not holding a gun to anybody's head and taking their money. Uh, these congregations that these churches and everything they voluntarily do this stuff. Um, and I think I did a video about this, uh, when it came to Tamika Mallory and the money she was receiving. I thought, no, was it Tamika Mallory or was it Patrice Cullors? It was one of them. Uh, but the money that they receive, you know, from Black Lives Matters donations and things like that. And, you know, a lot of times they don't end up you know, kicking money back or anything like that. And they just, you know, they get, they get fat off the hog, you know, just like Patrice Cullors, you know, buying that three, a three million dollar house, you know, out in the, you know, out, out in the cuts. And then, you know, when she gets exposed for it or catches backlash for it, uh, she drops out, you know, she steps down from her position um, but it's like I've said, I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with it because at the end of the day, you can't hate the player. You got to hate the game. Hate the coach that put him in the game. And in th these instances, it's the people who continue to donate to these people. It's kind of like Umar Johnson. It's been sitting around for 10 years talking about this school and nothing's been done. He'll give you a, you know, a finishing date on when everything, uh, you know, need to be done. And then it never comes into fruition. And all he does is depends on depends on people and their amnesia 
in their short term memory to where they forget or either forget or or they just had no knowledge of how he was operating before. And so he can keep moving the needle and you'll keep sending money, sending money um, in hopes of, you know, making these things happen. Now, uh, can he, you know, now, if anything, you know, that, you know, when it comes to making false promises or anything like that, um, I'm not entirely sure if you can go to court on something like that. Maybe you can. Because it was promised and you provide that proof of why you donated that money and when it was expected to be done, uh, you know, even though it wasn't put in set in writing. I mean, in this day and age, you got everything on, you know, YouTube, YouTube, social media, IG and everything. So people are giving their word on there. But I don't know if that can be held to a contractual agreement or anything like that. Um, half the time, a lot of these people are, you know, patronized, giving their, you know, having money dished to them just because of their messages in general. You know, that's what happens with Joel Osteen. They love the message, you know, these different pastors and they passing that collection plate around. Uh, sometimes they may tell you what it's for, you know, for the church in general or just uh, who knows. But y'all keep putting these folks in the game. Y'all keep making them rich. You know, be mad at the people who are, you know, be mad at the people who are who are doing that. I'm not going to say y'all. Normally the people who are mad are the ones who aren't donating. But it's the congregation. It's the people who are followers. You know, it's a free market. If you can... If you've got something that you can sell to the people, the people that people leave, believe is worthwhile, you know, just like, you know, people use liquor, marijuana, different things, even food to feel good. You know, more than just hunger, a lot of times feel, food is used as a comfort food, you know, desserts and things like that. Well, it's the same thing, even though it's not something that's, you know, it doesn't have a physical form, but words can be comforting, a good word. And so a lot of times people are willing to patronize a person for that, no matter if what they're saying is accurate, no matter if what they're saying is truthful, anything like that. And so if you have a large influx of that because a person is outstanding with his words or just, you know, that charismatic of a person that's a free market and he deserves every dollar that you give him because he's able to do that that's you know that's just that's just what he was able to <laughs> he he put it the people determined his worth right the people determined his worth so Don't be mad at the player. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. You know, simple as that. And, you know, um, a lot of times, nine times out of ten, when it comes to people like that and people doing activism, uh, you know, it's a double-edged sword. But I do believe that, you know, they... You know, you should at least try to patronize a person who's giving a good message or going out of their way to do different research, you know, things like that. Because, you know, you don't want to see a you don't want to see a repeat of, you know, things that like things like what happened with, you know, Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, you know, to where they're dying broke. Um, now, of course, you take a gamble of a person taking the money to run, but, you know, you get you really pay attention to a person and, you know, their moral character and their behavior, their daily behaviors and how, how they act. You know, you may run into the right thing and, you know, be able to get somebody who's going to have this train moving along. And a lot of times, you know, things like, you know, money, patronizing people for those different things like that, it it, it allows them, you know, to expand. 
they're able to travel or, you know, even just with research. A lot of times, you know, the research is highly costly, especially, you know, just something as simple as, you know, having copies, printing pages, things like that. That's a costly thing. Um, so that's just something to consider. Like I said, you know, uh, you know, Joey Osteen's a, definitely a character, you know, the same guy that, you know, when Katrina, Katrina came in, you know, when Katrina happened, he didn't want to let <laughs> nobody No, I'm sorry, sorry, not Katrina, but when the flooding happened in Houston, he didn't want to let nobody into his church. Uh, and, you know, like, I, and, I mean, he has the right to do that, but, you know, Puts him in an extremely bad light, especially as, a, you know, somebody supposed to be a man of God. And, you know, I don't know. These guys expose themselves every day, especially these pastors. A lot of them are just the biggest pimps ever. As far as uh, as far as, you know, the taxes and things like that, having the IRS come after them. I'll never be a proponent of that. I'll never advocate for that because the. IRS has been robbing the people for, you know, over 100 years now. And, um, and you know, they, you know, dishing our money to the cartels. Dishing our money to the cartels, you know, they've never been on our side. So, I'm, shoot, if anything, the IRS needs to get off of everybody's ass. It's just that these churches, you know, they're protected, you know, they're protected from, you know, tax free, you know, from the U.S. government and things like that. Uh, first of all, the government isn't supposed to be respecting, you know, or acknowledging any place of, you know, religion. You know, that's a complete violation. So. It's yeah, man, it's crazy, you know. Like I said, a lot of people they don't agree with it. They believe they don't believe it's fair, but hey, it's his money. You know, he got it off his, you know, his words are his work. You know, simple as that. If you want to convince anybody, convince the people to stop donating. You know, other than that, you know, it's it is what it is. So it's all the free market. If you got something, no matter how, you know, just ridiculous it is or whatever, if a person's willing to buy or send you money, you know, for it, you know, to keep you going, can't knock that. So let me know what you think in the comment section. And I'll holler at y'all later. Peace.